Hi there. Good morning. We're hoping that our internet's good. This is take two. Let me know if you're there. Okay. This is uh, the last Monday before Lent begins. Yeah. more uh, more days before Ash Wednesday and um, and then Lent begins and so I am going to start with the reading I'm going to combine the readings from yesterday and the readings from today They had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, It is because we have no bread. <clears throat> and becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? Do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, him 12, and the seven for the 4,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, seven. And then he said to them, do you not yet understand? So here we are, and, um, and the Pharisees keep asking for signs and, and proof. Um, and the disciples keep forgetting that Jesus provides and that miracles happen. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about this, this leaven, the Pharisees' leaven and, and Herod's leaven that Jesus is warning against. Um, he says, <clears throat> um, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. So yeast is teeny tiny. Um, oh, Lori's saying it's frozen and somebody's saying it's choppy. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's try, let's try something else. We have definite connection issues. So let's try something else. Hang on. Let me see if I can get it better. One minute. Here, you want a tour of my house? Let's do that. Um, we're going to go this way. Here, carry the Bible, Sarah. We're going this way. This way. I'm going to see if we can get better connection in this room. Trying, trying, trying. All right. So flip around. How are we? We have better connection? Somebody said I'm back, so that's good. Is it still choppy? Here, let me go get my phone. Can somebody let me know. I don't think that's gonna help, Carrie. Can somebody let me know? It's good now. Okay. Martha says it's good now, but it was choppy. All right, let me get a chair. Oh, 
Uh, now I need my glasses. Can you pass? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're back. So, um, so where are we? We're in Mark 8, 11, right? Mark 8, 11 to 21. So yesterday's reading. Now this is a weird. Yesterday's reading and today's reading. And we're talking about the leaven. Um, we're talking about the yeast that the, um, that the disciples, uh, that Jesus is warning the disciples, do not use the, the yeast of the Pharisees or the yeast of Herod. Okay, I'm happy that we're much better. Um, so what is, the, what is the yeast of the Pharisees? The yeast of the Pharisees is, um, is their checklist, right? Um, <laughs> they're, 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 they're offering signs. They're not offering true reality. And um, <coughs> they're offering, and, and they're asking for um, for signs from God, and and they have this like checklist, um, this performance of religious works, not not works that come from their heart, but works that are the things that they think they have to check off to make everything good and kosher. Um, and that's their, their leaven. That's what they're doing. But, but that leaven, um, that, that leaven, what does it cause to puff up? It causes their pride to puff up. And Jesus warns against this over and over again, that this kind of knowledge puffs up and love builds up. And that leaven of the Pharisees, that is just, all it does is feed their pride. It makes them feel good about them. Um, and it doesn't, it isn't the divine leaven that we need for the miracles that Christ is fully capable of. Um, but then the, he says, he says also be wary, wary of the yeast of Herod. Um, so what is Herod's leaven? Herod um, isn't trying to check off the religious checklist. Um, Herod's leaven is his worldliness, right? Um, his, his leaven magnifies lust and it magnifies power. Um, it magnifies the acclaim of the world. Um, what is true leaven? So true leaven is faith, and it's that trustful surrender. So here's where it gets interesting when we think about, about Lent. Um, when we consider Lent, we need to think about what we are substituting in our lives for true leaven. What are the things that we're making idols of? What are the things that puff us up that are not God? So um, when we try to discern what penitential acts require, um, what penitential acts will be beneficial for our souls, we should think about the ones that require surrender, right? That, that Jesus says to them, do you not yet understand? If you give it to me, Give me these five loaves, and I'll give you five thousand. Um, if, if he's asking you to surrender, and in order for you to really truly dig in to Lent, um, we have to ask ourselves what is going to require faith and trust and surrender on our part. Um, chances are, and maybe this isn't true, but chances are giving up chocolate isn't really going to require a whole lot of you. Um, that's that's a, a nice little penitential thing, but it's not an all in, I love God and I trust God and here's how I'm going to submit my soul to God kind of thing. Um, so good leaven is what gives us the strength to persevere when we're tempted. So what really tempts you? Um, what really is is the the remember yeah, last week we were talking about the apple or the fruit from the tree of good and evil and how she saw that it was good like it was good to eat um, and we talked about how the devil tempts us with things that um, that are good but not good for us um, so what is that thing in your life and and how can you surrender that thing to God and just say, this is a temptation. Temptations don't come from God. Temptations come, temptations to do wrong or to go against God's will. Those don't come from God. They come from Satan, but he uses good to tempt us. And that's where it gets super tricky. And that's where we need to surrender it to God because we can't do it without him. We can't, 
We can't do 40 days of giving up whatever if it's truly something that the devil's tempting us of and that we need to surrender. That's what our give up is. Our give up is giving it to God. Um, because we're tempted by something that is disordered. It, it orders us away from God. So it might be good, but the temptation orders us away from God. And it corrupts us in a way that we make an idol of it. Um, and so, and, and the Pharisees made an idol of their checklist. It wasn't about God. It was about checking through the checklist and puffing themselves up with knowing, oh, I did it right. Check, 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 check. Um, so what are the things that you put your trust in that aren't God? Those are the things that you need to give up because the things that you put your trust in that aren't God are standing in the way of you and total surrender to God. Um, <laughs> he's barking. What are the things that you try to control the most? Give those up. Give them up to God. Surrender those things to God. Because um, those are your idols. And and those are the those are the false sense of security. Those are the places that you do not yet understand. Nothing in this life um, cannot be surrendered to God. And if you are holding something back, that's what you need to give up. So prop your Bibles open to this. Thanks for bearing with me as we found a place to, uh, to do this without bad internet. Um, and I will see you tomorrow. Um, we'll talk about getting ready for Lent one more time, and then we're going to dig deep into the church's liturgy for Lent. And I'm really excited about doing that, about just taking the daily readings one day at a time and, um, and seeing how the church has organized scripture so that it unfolds to us and we get the fullness of Lent out of that. Um, the Lenten retreat, Repent and Restore, is going to be live on the membership um, blog uh, starting on Wednesday. So if you're not a member and you're thinking about being a member, um, maybe you want to consider just being a member for the next couple of months so that you can do the, the re Repent and Restore. It's kind of like a, a Lenten um, coming back from burnout, um, kind of restoring all the things that, that we have that are so broken right now. Um, it's, it's one that we've done before. Um, like, oh, I don't know, three or four times over the last seven years. Um, it's kind of tried and true. Um, but I invite you to join us there at the Take Up and Read membership if you want to do that. Just, you know, you, there's no long-term commitment here. You could just join for the next couple of months and then, um, and then that be it. It would just give you something. The one thing about, uh, about that is if you're getting off of social media for Lent, then um, Repent and Restore is a way to connect with us um, there. There's a message board. Um, there'll be daily, twice daily, practically blog posts um, that will have the daily readings. They'll have some things to think and pray about, um, some very long essays. Um, it's definitely, there's a book in it for sure. Um, and you can have all that right inside the membership space and never have to touch um, Instagram. Also, if you are getting off social media for Lent, remember that these messages go up at noon every day on, um, or they go up before noon, but they can be in your mailbox every day at noon if you subscribe to Take Up and Read just for free. Just subscribe to the email list, they'll get there. Um, or you can just check the Take Up and Read blog every day. Go to takeupandread.org, click on Daily Inspirations, and they're gonna be there. They go up by 10. Um, so that's a way that you can stay in touch and have the benefit of these without ever touching Instagram, if that's what you choose to do for Lent. All right, that is well enough. Thanks for being so patient with me, and um, I'll be back tomorrow.